Hey, Pastor Mark here. Hope you're doing well. Hope this video finds you well. I've been reading recently in Genesis chapter 4 about a guy named Moses, and Moses is tasked with something that is going to be way over his head. I wonder if you've ever been asked to do something that you felt way too inadequate for. Um, and this is what it says in, in Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 14. Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I'm slow of speech and tongue. And the Lord said to him, Who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. But Moses said, O Lord, please send someone else to do it. And then the Lord's anger burned against Moses, and he said, What about your brother Aaron the Levite? There's an old saying that goes, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Well, apparently, in Exodus chapter 4, if you want to make God mad, tell him your limitations. Now, when we first read this, what we need to understand is that Moses is being asked to lead the people of Israel out of slavery, where they are being held captive in, in Egypt. And there's over a million Israelites that are being held in slavery. And so this is no small task by any stretch of the imagination. And when God first approaches Moses about it, Moses is first response is, me? You want me to do this? Surely not me. That's what he says in Exodus chapter 3 verse 11. And, but God says, no, I'm going to be with you. I'll, you know, I'll teach you what to say. I'll show you what to do. Moses again has some more questions and concerns and God, you know, he continues to answer that and there's no anger at either time. But when Moses finally just says, send somebody else, I'm not able to do it. God gets mad and he doesn't give him a motivational speech. No, you can do this. Go, go win one for the Gipper kind of thing. God flat out gets mad. Our temptation when we look at Moses is to think, man, he's just a really humble guy who, who just, uh, you know, he, he knows his, what his limitations are and, and God just needs to respect that maybe. But the reality of the situation is that Moses isn't displaying humility. In fact, he's displaying another kind of pride. Now, we typically think of pride as, as thinking too much of ourselves or being arrogant, but Moses' pride is, is a pride that's really dangerous. Moses was so prideful to think, that God's ability to use him rises and falls with his own abilities to perform. See, when we think that God is in any way dependent upon our ability to accomplish something, then we have essentially limited the limitless God. Now, maybe in 2015, you're the parent thinking, man, I'm always going to, I'm always going to stink and struggle as a parent, or I'm always going to, you know, have this dead end job, or I'm always going to have uh, these struggles and these frustrations in my life, and my kids are always going to be frustrating to me. But maybe this life is a whole lot less about you and me than we ever thought it was. If God is able to use a stuttering, murderous shepherd to set an entire people group free, what can he do with you and with me? Think about it. We'll see you next week.